This is about the implants that Keon has now for arthrodesis. Um, this kind of has evolved because of a couple of events. First is that with the elbow system, we knew we had to have some sort of a backup in case there was a failure of the implant because it's not as easy as if there's a failure of a hip where you could do a FHO and you kind of get out of the situation pretty easily. What do you do if the elbow implant fails? So we knew we had to come up with a arthrodesis plate. Um, and there have been designs around Keon for some time doing these boomerang type plates. So we're going to do these based on, on what's called um, the Keon Alps, but it's the Alps II system because it's kind of our second generation of Alps, but realistically it should be kind of called Alps minus one because we're going back to the design of the PC fixed plate that was used in DeVos back in the early 90s. So these are our solutions. We've got plates for medial pan parcel plating, the kind of boomerang type plate, which could also be used for elbow. We've got dorsal pan carpal plates, partial carpal plates. These are specialty plates now. These have evolved just recently because we now sponsor AO courses that are in category three countries. And the course that they want to do in Dubrovnik next week is a sports injury course. And we said, yes, we'd like to continue to sponsor that about six months ago. And they said, but we need to have specialty plates for carpal, pancarpal, and uh, pantarsal injuries. We said, well, we have ALPS system. And uh, Alessandro Peter says, well, but ALPS system, it's kind of OK, but you, know, you have the same size screw along the whole length of the plate. That's not usable for what we need to do here. Um, we also have issues with closing soft tissue. If you have a high plate profile distally, it's going to be diff difficult to close tissues. So you need to come up with something else. So Alessandro and I spent some time on cadavers and came up with plans. Of those two plates, the pancarpal and partial carpal, are done together with Dr. Peters. Then we looked at using an ALPS for a pantarsal plating system. Uh, some of our more experienced ALP users have done ALPS for just pancarpal, but not for pantarsal, because they really feel that the plate alone in this dorsal application would be too weak. So we'll show that uh, in the AO course in Dubrovnik in collaboration with a medial pantarsal plate. And then a plate that we've had around for quite a while, actually, is the proximal intervalangial plate for equine use. This plate is uh, based off the Alps 20. It's a 20 millimeter size plate. Uses a very large locking screw, which uh, looks like a good solution there in the acorn field. So what is Alps 2? Well, Alps 2 is going back to the initial <coughs> taper only, no thread on the locking interface to the, to the plate. Um, we had to go away from that, from PC fix to the first ALP system that was used at Keon because of patent issues. And the difference here is, you know, they both look like they have a, a conical head. They both have screws on, or threads on the screws. But it's what happens between the, the, the screw and the plate that's important. In the ALPS too, in the PC fix style, the hole in the plate is also only conical. In the current ALP system, the hole in the plate has a single row of a thread in the bottom of the hole. So when you use an ALPS plate now, you kind of have to go backwards a little bit with the screw to feel that you start to engage that thread correctly as you drive the screw down into the hole. The, the tension that is now needed to seat the cone is developed from the screw to the plate. So as you turn it tight, you don't need to put any axial force on the screw because the first thread there is going to pull the, pull the screw down into the plate and lock it. With just a conical head with a conical hole in the plate, you have to develop some axial force. So you need the bone to either pull the screw down into the plate or you have to put a little axial force on it yourself as you get it to the end of locking the screw into the plate. 
it's a small difference, but it's important if you realize that because if you do like the TPO, the TPLO system or DPO, when you put the screw in, you should go back around and tighten them all because if you have three screws in a bone segment and you tighten the first one in, then you tighten the second one and that pulls the plate a little closer to the bone, basically you have unloosened it some off the first screw. So it's important that you go back and snug the screws down to pull them all down and make sure they're all, all tight. So that's really the only difference. And this is, you know, that's kind of evolved from work that was done in AO in the project called Fix In in 1986 where you had, you had these little rotational eyes in here that would allow the, the screw to angulate. And then it was decided, well, if you're gonna lock the screw to the plate, you don't need angulation because the bone is going to be right below the plate, so you can go with the short monocortical screw. And that's how uh, the PC fix ended up being developed. And now we're going back to that. Uh, a couple of reasons. One is easier to produce the plates, and there's less chance for surgical error of getting that screw cross thread as, as you start it. But it has all the same advantages that you have with ALPS. ALPS 2 and ALPS both allow for preservation of periosteal blood supply. There's increased stability by having locking screws. Um, there's preservation of the endosteal blood supply if you go with monocortical screws. And you can still use compression and variable angle screws um, with other little tricks with, uh, with, with sleeves, etc. So the first one is the medial pantarsal plate. Again, looks like a boomerang, but we avoided to call it a boomerang plate because boomerangs come back to you. We don't want these coming back, so we avoided that in the name. Um, this is the indication of how it, how it looks when it's put on there. There are two different sizes of screw holes in the plate, so the, the proximal screws are sized larger than the distal screws. So this is the size offering that we have. We have four different sizes. The one that you saw on the model is, what, is this one here. It's based on an ALPS 10 size, ALPS 2 size 10. So the size 10 has a 4.0 locking screw, and the size 9 has a 3.5 locking screw. As well in these holes, other than just a locking screw, there are ways to put standard cortical screws in there if you needed to angulate to be able to grab a, a fragment or, or a bone segment is not directly be below the, the, the hole in the plate. You can angulate it to grab it. So this is the indication on the pan tarsal here where we thought, okay, first we could just do a dorsal plating. And to do just a dorsal plating, you need something like an ALPS 11 to be able to have enough strength in the plate. And if you use an ALPS 11, then you're looking at four zero locking screws or two seven cortical screws for the distal metatarsal. And we just feel that that's too large of a screw into the, into the metatarsal. Uh, so the, the, what is gonna be taught now is that a really cast-free system would start with first a medial plate and then to segment or complement that with a a smaller ALPS plate. So we would use something like an ALPS 9 plate where you could then use either locking 3-2 screw distally or even a 2-4 cortical screw. Then going to the carpus, this is where we needed a specialty plate because anything from ALPS is, is too much of a profile distally. Um, we thought, well, if we go with just engaging one metacarpal, uh, we're just going to have pretty small screws there for using a 2-0 locking screw. We thought that, well, we should probably engage two of them. We'll have, have much more stability. That there is some negativity to that is that then the, the metacarpals are locked together. They're not free. But since the, the carpal metacarpal joint is fused anyway, we think that this is probably a, an acceptable thing to do. So this is what it looks like on the proximal end. You could use monocortical screws, which is important because these plates now are, are really, they're put on the wrong side. Normal plating for trauma, you want to put a plate on the tension side. 
And these plates are being put on the compression side. So the, the back side of the, of the tibia here is being loaded in tension. So any screws that are penetrating through that screw holes are very much influencing the strength of the construct. So here it would be very advantageous to go with just monocortical screws. Um, then we have a, a larger hole here so that we can go through and get a good bite of the, the radial corporal bone and into the palmar process. And then we have uh, six monocortical or bicortical locking screws here. Again, the most distal screw would be really an, an advantage to go with only a, only a monocortical screw so that you don't penetrate the far cortex. Because again, this is in tension on that side, and any bending there, a hole there, causes a reduction in the stress by a factor of two to two and a half times. So anything you can do to reduce that by not having a hole on that surface is an advantage. So then, based on the same kind of shape of the, the distal shape of the pancarpal plate, we came up with the design for the partial carpal plate basically keeping the same distal component the same, and then adding to it this flange on the proximal end that allows to have some ears with larger holes so you can put some, some variable angle screws in there to get a good bite into the radial and ulnar carpal bones. So looking at the dorsal pancarpal plate, we have this available in four different sizes. So you see you have the locking specialty screws, 4.5, 4.0, 3.5, 3.0, all on the, the proximal ends. And then on the, the distal end, you've got either a locking specialty screw, 2.5, 2.0, 2.0, or 1.5. So now it's a, all these different plates need a lot of different screw sizes. Again, here's the, the partial carpal. Again, we've got the locking specialty screws of all the different sizes. So now we have this whole system of the arthrodesis plates, we have ALPS 2, and we've now got screws going from a, a locking special screw 4.5 down to 1.5 and half millimeter diameters. These require different screwdriver inserts, and it sounds like there's a lot of stuff that's needed to be able to put these in. But when you look at what the, the system really needs is, well, for locking specialty screw, other than a general instruments like a screwdriver handle and a, and a depth gauge, all you need is a, a sleeve, the appropriate drill bit, and a screwdriver insert. So for each of these sets of screws, you have three instruments and you're ready to go ahead and do that. And another reason we decided to go with these with ALPS too is that we wanted to use alloy, titanium alloy for the strength, and the key on kind of standard now is that the original Alps that are a pure titanium are the light blue anodized color. The green anodized plates are the titanium alloy. Um, so we wanted to keep a titanium alloy, high strength. And since TPLO and DPO already had the conical screws and the alloy material, we wanted to keep with the, the kind of standard that we've set up now that these would be green plates that have the conical locking so they were going to be the new style of what we'll call ALPS 2 plates and holes and it allows anybody now that has got into doing TPLO and didn't have the whole kit for ALPS because if you look at the ALPS instrumentation it looks pretty intimidating at first if you wanted to get started with it but if you're already doing TPLO and you have a drill sleeve, a drill bit and a screwdriver insert it's just like yeah send me these new plates, because I've got the screws, I've got the sleeves, and I can just expand now into different plate sizes and shapes with, uh, with the existing TPLO system that I use. Yes, please. Are there, is there any bending intended, or uh, are there special bending instruments we have, we have bending instruments, but uh, these pre-contoured plates, it's felt that there's only a, a minimal amount of contouring that's required. Okay, then the last one is the one that we have for equine use. This is the proximal interphalangeal plate. It's just a three-hole plate. 
For the horse, this needs a big screw. This is a large 6.4 diameter locking screw. This is a big thing. The screwdriver that you use for that, if you look at the normal Torx 10 size that we kind of use on normal screws, this uses a Torx 30 screwdriver. And in conjunction with the plate, you use a couple four or five cortical screws to go across the joint. So here's how it is uh, implanted. These are the two 4.5 screws that are coming across here, across the joint, and the, the plate is put on there. And this, there's been a mechanical study that's been done. It's going to be published sometime in the near future, looking at this compared to a synthesis uh, 4.5 broad plate. And it's uh, favorable in terms of strength. And that's where we are with the arthrodesis plates. Uh, the ones that we're going to be introducing in Dubrovnik are really new, so there may be some changes in the shape of them in the, in the future, but they're, they're, they are available, and if you have TPLO instrumentation, it's very easy to start to use them. Thank you.